Dave Spar is here with a little bit more detail on when the, that uh, dry lightning might be reaching us here. Dave, uh, you said tomorrow, correct? Yeah, that's uh, that's right. That's what the weather office is now telling us. Uh, Monday, or this afternoon, tomorrow afternoon, rather, all the way through uh, Monday afternoon, it looks like. That just seems to be the peak of the action. However, when we show you the models, it looks like we start getting that moisture flow a little earlier. That means before noon tomorrow. But the real concern about all this is, as they mentioned, the higher elevations, because you get a little bit of uplift here. Let's speak of what we have right now. Here's a little bit of that fog we have at the coast. That's going to mix out. That's our local condition. That's moisture too, but that's a nice kind of moisture because that's very dense. It's not very active. It's cool. All that kind of stuff. We're seeing this also along the East Bay shoreline too. The shrubbery is here. Here's that. That's the only reason why I can tell it's UC Berkeley. Okay. So the fire weather watch that we have, note the higher elevations are included in all of this because they provide the upsloping, the force lifting. So you already have some middle air moisture here comes across the mountain it gets pushed higher causing that condensation in the rain energy exchange thank you everything mixes and you got your lightning but the problem is the rain can't reach the ground because there isn't much moisture in which to do that and it's going through dry air that's what the problem is and our air is going to be fairly dry particularly by the afternoon hours both today also tomorrow and maybe even as late as Monday putting it all together for us possible thunder showers with gusty winds you can get that too with this energy exchange of course but it's those higher elevations that this may happen. Maybe we don't see it happen when it first starts until a fire gets going here. So that's the problem issue. Here around the bay, we watch the fog mix out. Tomorrow, there's the thunder shower activity. We don't see a lot of greenery being painted in our general area, but that just means maybe it won't strike the ground is all. So we have this clop of moisture here at 5 o'clock, right during the maximum daytime heating, when the atmosphere has a lot of energy to play with. That's why we're on the lookout all the way until Monday. And as you heard on the report as well, this kind of event, particularly the monsoon, it goes all the way really into October, at least in the southwest. Let's watch the whole week ahead. That is uh, the event we're talking about Sunday to Monday. Then we have our traditional northwesterly flow, kind of, not much happens. Oh, next weekend we do the whole thing again, it looks like. So on the lookout for some more uh, dry lightning potentially into next weekend. Maybe we'll get some moisture out of that. But again, it's the same type of synoptic pattern into next weekend to look out for. 66 in the four zone forecast, San Francisco to the coast, lower 60s. You got some 70s down to the south along the peninsula, 73 for Burlingame. Yeah, 80 for Palo Alto. We're just scratching into some of the lower 80s here. 82 for Redwood City, but sometimes those are going to pop in the 90s in July. 81 for San Jose, Santa Clara at 82, also with Cupertino. East Bay shoreline to the south, keeping it in the 70s. Lower 90s out to Tri Valley. A 91 or so Walnut Creek, 93 for Concord, at least it's not 100. 73 for Oakland, 68 for Berkeley. Vallejo, you'll check in a 66, 89 going on for Fairfield, 81 for Napa. Santa Rosa at 86 with more 80s heading down south. For the week ahead, unsettled to start things off. We're in the 80s for most of the week. Here's that other monsoon pattern to look out for at the end of the week. Bay temperatures look to be dropping in the upper 60s at times and kind of cool along the coast. Noel. Thanks, Dave.